Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan or Meg or Megs, whatever you want to call me. And today is garden tour day. So I thought I would take you along with me. You guys seem to really like this type of content on Instagram and TikTok. So I thought, why not bring it to YouTube? I get a lot of questions on my videos about maintenance and garden chores, what my garden tour days look like, how many hours it takes to maintain a garden like this, things like that. So I'm gonna take you along with me today. But I am currently questioning all life decisions because it's like three o'clock, like hottest part of the day. I don't know why I'm deciding to do this right now. <laughs> it's so hot and humid right now. I'm like seeking shelter under my squash tunnel. So on the agenda today, I have the typical things that happen on a garden tour day and that's pruning, fertilizing and watering. I also have some plants that are totally infested with bugs that I'm gonna be ripping out and replanting. I have some plants, actually some of my squash right here that are showing signs of powdery mildew, so I've gotta deal with that. And then I also have to start thinking about the fall garden and some of you are probably like, Megan, it's July, why are you thinking about fall? Here in zone 7B, July and August is the time that we prepare for our fall crops. So as I'm working, as I'm walking around, I just need to think about what do I wanna grow? Where can I grow it? Can I even fit it in my garden? Cause I have over planted a lot of summer vegetables. And every year I say next year, I'm not gonna overcrowd things and I'm gonna leave room for fall crops. And every year I'm in this situation where I've over planted and I, don't have any room for fall crops. Okay, so let's do this. First thing I'm gonna do is deal with these bean plants back here. They're growing up this obelisk and they are totally infested with bean beetles. So infested that as the executive director of my garden, I've made the executive decision to remove all of the bean plants and I'm going to replant. Because where I live in zone 7B, our first frost doesn't hit us until like mid-November. So that still gives me like four months to replant some beans and get another harvest. And this time I'll definitely stay on top of the bean beetle situation. I'm gonna remove the bean plants and I'm going to burn them. Therefore burning all of the bean beetle larvae. I know that's harsh, but it is what it is. This beautiful obelisk full of beans. It really was super beautiful before the beetles messed it up. This is the damage that they do. They just totally skeletonize all of the leaves. And this eventually ends up killing the plant because it can't perform photosynthesis with leaves like this. Here's a good look of what the larva look like. As you can see, the plant's infested because there's like 10 of them on there. They're these yellow, squishy looking, just ugh. I hate them. What's also super annoying is these guys are called bean beetles, but they attack curcubits as well. So they also attack your squash, your cucumbers, your pumpkins, your gourds. And this is what they look like as adults. They highly resemble ladybugs. My first year of gardening, I made the huge mistake of thinking that these were ladybugs and let them live. Biggest mistake of my life. I've only removed just a few leaves and look at how many bean beetles. Oh my God. The easiest way to tell bean beetles apart from ladybugs is that bean beetles are completely orange, even their heads. Ladybugs can be orange, but their heads are gonna be black. That's so disgusting. While I'm over here, I'm also going to prune back this oregano because it's flowering and I shouldn't have even let it get this far because oregano is super invasive and now there's probably going to be seeds everywhere and there's probably going to be oregano growing everywhere. I'm cutting it back pretty significantly, pretty hard um, because it grows like a weed and it'll be totally fine. It'll come back and be healthier than ever. I'm cutting back this snapdragon as well, although I'm gonna leave this spike because I want seeds from this one because it's super pretty and it's starting to form seed heads, so I'm gonna leave that spike there. All right, now it's cleared out and I am ready to plant some more beans here. So I totally just changed my mind. I'm not planting any more beans. Like I said, I have to start thinking about fall. I found these volunteer tomatoes that were popping up. Had no clue they were even over here and this one's even starting to flower um, and they need a trellis. So I think I'm just gonna use this as a makeshift tomato trellis. That way this area back here that I just cleaned out where the beans were, the soil should be good because beans just screw there and I can grow something like broccoli or cauliflower back here. Here. 
I think that was the perfect solution. Now the tomatoes have a trellis and I have a little bit of space to plant something else for the fall. Now I'm gonna go and burn all of this. So it's about to storm out of nowhere. Gotta love summer storms. Um, but I'm gonna continue working until it rains or lightens me out. It kind of looks like it's gonna be a gnarly one, but at least it's really cool right now. The sun went out and I'm not profusely sweating anymore. And I'm glad that I got the beans burnt before it starts raining. Next, we're gonna go into the squash tunnel because the honey nuts are starting to show signs of powdery mildew. This is what powdery mildew looks like. It's super, super common at this time of year, especially in zone 7B. It is so humid here. It's virtually impossible to avoid powdery mildew at some point and usually it starts hitting around July because we have these constant summer rains it just never stays dry so I'm just gonna come in here and clip off all of the affected leaves that I can find which is mainly a lot of these bottom leaves I'm gonna cut these leaves that have yellow spots as well because this is signs of downy mildew Just that little bit of pruning opens this up a lot more and it allows a lot more airflow to get through here. Not seeing as much fungal issue on this side, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a pruning just as a preventative. Another plant I really need to take care of is this poor zucchini that's suffering from everything. It's got really bad powdery mildew and it unfortunately got vine borers. So you know what? I've had enough zucchini this season. I am so zucchinied out. I'm just gonna take this out and then this grow bag will be reserved for something for fall. Cutting it down here at the base. Now I'll just keep this grow bag open for something for fall, maybe a broccoli, a cauliflower, cabbage. Next I have a patch of corn right here that was a total and complete failure. So sorry about my neighbor's dog barking incessantly <laughs> but this patch of corn was a total and complete failure and it was part my fault part nature's fault it was my fault because i planted it a little bit too early i planted it at the same time that i planted it last year which was early but it worked it was nature's fault because we had an unusually cold june so what happened was this corn got super stressed and it started tasseling super early. So there was all tassels, but no silks. And then the silks came like weeks and weeks later when all of the tassels had basically dried up. And so all of the corn got really poorly pollinated, if at all. So just a total fail, I replanted another patch of corn, but for this patch, I'm going to rip it all out. And again, it's gonna be a space that I can plant some fall stuff. I'm super bummed about this one. I forget the variety name, um, but it was supposed to be so beautiful. Well, it is beautiful, but just imagine if this was a full cob. My neighbors are wilding today. And then we've got this blue variety. Ugh, this was gonna be such a beautiful patch of corn, but June just had to be cold. the compost. I'm almost done. It actually decided not to storm. It was just some gnarly looking clouds. The cloud cover was nice because it wasn't as hot, but it is still so humid out here. Like I just, I feel so sticky. And now my other neighbor's kid is screaming. I live in a very noisy, active neighborhood if you can't tell. I'm sure they get annoyed with me talking to myself all the time out here. So that's whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna fertilize. Usually I'll use some compost if I have it, but every other month I like to give my plants this little treat. It totally doesn't have to be this brand. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do really like this brand. It's an organic tomato and vegetable fertilizer by Dr. Earth because it has mycorrhizae in it and I just feel like I get a really good response from my plants whenever I fertilize with this. I also like Garden Tone by Espoma. They also have a tomato tone as well that I really like for tomatoes. And then I also really like to use a fish fertilizer every other month. Every off month that I'm not using this, I will fertilize with a fish fertilizer. Usually I use Neptune's Harvest. I'm not gonna have time to fertilize my entire garden today. I have like 
14 or something garden beds um, so that would take a long time I usually try to break it up and just do a couple of beds per day so I'm gonna see what I can get done today I know it's supposed to rain tonight um, and that's perfect because this is a granular slow release fertilizer so I'm gonna be sprinkling it in the garden beds and then it kind of the way that it seeps down and gets to the plant to the roots is through water so I always love to fertilize before I know it's about to rain because it really helps what I do is I just sprinkle it around the base of the plant kind of try to mix it into the soil just a little bit and that's it And I'm just going to end the day by watering some of my container plants. These plumeria cuttings that someone gifted to me. I'm super excited about them. I love plumeria. I totally meant to prune some of my cucumbers that are also showing signs of downy and powdery mildew, but I'll just have to get to them another day. That's it. I made it. I'm done for the day. I'm so hot and sticky and sweaty and I just can't wait to get in the shower <laughs> but I always feel so good and so satisfied after garden tour days because it's just like I know that I took care of my garden as best as I could and it just like it makes me feel good even though we're like in the thick of it right now we're in the peak of the summer where there's pests there's diseases there's crazy weather I just I come out here I do what I can and that's all I can do. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. That would be amazing. And also drop a comment. Let me know if you like this type of content or what kind of content that you want to see from me here on YouTube. And I hope everybody has a beautiful week. Okay, I'm off to go shower now. Bye!